Hello maths learners! In the previous video, I explained what factorizing is in a nutshell. I explained the different types of factorizing that you need to be able to do. In this video, I'm focusing on the first type that you need to be able to do. Now guys, this is a very special type of factorizing. It's the factorizing that I call the king of all types. It is the type that you always need to try first. So when the question says factorize this expression fully, you need to look at the expression and you need to say, can I do the first and most important type of factorizing? And that is highest common factor. Let's go. Here are my steps for approaching highest common factor when you're asked to factorize. So remember, the question will say factorize the algebraic expression fully, or it'll just simply say factorize. You need to look and see, can I do the highest common factor? Now, how do you do the highest common factor? So what I do is you look at your expression and just be aware of the number of terms in the expression. Remember terms are separated by pluses and minuses. So look at it and be like, oh, it has three terms, it has two terms, it has five terms, it has 10 terms, whatever. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take out the biggest number that can be divided into the coefficients of all the terms. This sounds fancy, it sounds overcomplicated, but it's not. What we're looking for is the highest common factor. That is the biggest or the highest factor that can go into all the terms. And the important thing, guys, is that it needs to go into all the terms, not two out of the three, not one out of the three, not three out of the four, all of the terms. So we first look for the biggest number that can be divided into all terms. So the coefficients of all terms. Then we take out common variables. So when I say common, again, it must be common to all the terms. When we take out the variable, so say for example, we've got x, x squared, and x cubed. You take out the x with the lowest exponent. All these things that you take out, that is called your highest common factor. That goes outside the brackets. Then you open your leftover brackets and you divide each term by the highest common factor. Now, it seems like I rushed those steps, but the reason I did is because it makes so much more sense to go through the steps with an example. So let's do it. So firstly, we need to look at how many terms we're dealing with. We're dealing with three terms. Remember, terms are separated by pluses and minuses. Then we need to look at our three terms and we need to ask ourselves, can I take something out of all three of these terms? Do they have something in common? Can I find a number that can divide into all three of those coefficients or those big numbers, so the four, the eight, and the two, without a remainder? Yes, we can. The number two goes into four, eight, and two without a remainder. You can't take out four because four can go into four without a remainder. It can go into eight without a remainder, but four can't go into two without, without a decimal or something like that. So part of our highest common factor, therefore, is two. So that's step one and two. Take out the biggest number that can be divided into the coefficients of all terms. Then we're going to look to see if we can take out common variables. So remember, I said if it's common, it has to be in all of the terms. So we've got x's and we've got y's. X's are in the first and second term. Y's are also in the first and second term. The last term is no variables. And because of this, we cannot take out a common variable. So our highest common factor, and I'm going to write it over here, our highest common factor is just the number two. So we've done the numbers, we've done the variables. Done, done, done. Everything you have taken out is called your highest common factor. Then we open our leftover bracket. I call it a leftover bracket. You can just call it whatever you want. Open leftover bracket, done. Then we divide each term by this highest common factor. So in this case, it's two. And we write the leftovers in the bracket. What do I mean by this? We take 4x squared y and we divide it by two. Now you can do this in your head. If you really need to write it on the side, you can. So you can write 4x squared y divided by two. Four divided by two gives me two. X squared Y will just stay X squared Y. And that's it. We can also say to ourselves, two 
multiplied by what will give me 4x squared y? Well, we know 2 multiplied by 2 gives me the 4. And then we've got x squared y will give me the x squared y. That's another way to look at it. It's just a different way to look at it. But it'll always work if you take your term, like here, and you divide it by your highest common factor, which is 2. You can check yourself. If you multiply the 2 back into the brackets like this, will it give me the first term? Yes, it will. Then you do the same thing, but with the second term. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. Then we've got xy, which needs to go over there in the brackets. Again, you can write it out on the side if, if it will help you. So you can write it like this. You can go 8xy divided by 2. We know how to simplify that little fraction. 8 divided by 2 gives me the 4, and then you write the xy. Then we need to do the same for the last term, which is 2. 2 divided by 2 is not 0 like some students might think. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Then you close your leftover brackets. We've taken out the highest common factor. We've divided each and every single one of the three terms by the highest common factor. And we've written the answer to that little division sum in each case in the leftover brackets. That's it. If we want to check if our answer is correct, we simply multiply the two into the brackets. And we should get where we started. If we don't, you've made a mistake. Let's do another example. In this example over here, we can start by looking at the numbers. So, what have I got? I've got 15 x to the power 4, y to the power 6. Then I've got minus x b squared. Oh goodness, let's see what's happening. So, can I find a number that can divide into 15 and 3 without a remainder? And I'm looking for the biggest one, the highest common factor. Yes, I can. 3 can go into 15 and 3 without a remainder. So 3 is part of our highest common factor. So we've looked for the numbers. Then we look for the variables. Does term 1 and term 2 contain any variables in common? Yes, the x. But now, what do I take out? Do I take out x to the power of 4, x to the power of 1? You always, according to our rules, take out the variable with the lowest exponent. So, what's lower? x to the power of 4 or x to the power of 1? Well, I mean, surely x to the power of 1 is lower. So, we take out x to the power of 1. Do I have any other variables that are in common between the two terms? No. My first term has got y to the power of 6. My second term's got b squared. That's it. So my highest common factor, and you don't actually have to write this, but I'm doing it for you guys, is 3x. That's my highest common factor. Then you open your leftover brackets. Then remember, guys, we're going to divide each term by the highest common factor. So we're going to divide this term here by 3x. We're going to write the leftovers over here. Then we're going to divide our second term by 3x and we're going to write the leftovers over here then we're going to close our leftover bracket so let's do it 15 divided by 3 is 5. x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 1 is x to the power of 3. how did i know that because when i divide and the bases are the same we keep the base and we minus the exponents so 4 minus 1 is 3. And then we've got y to the power of 6. Awesome. That is my first term divided by my highest common factor. Done. My second term, negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. You don't need to write the 1. If we just write the negative, it's fine. Then x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of 1 is essentially 1. So essentially, they cancel each other out. Then we've got b squared, and that needs to be written over there. And there we have it. We factorized our expression. Let's do one last example. In this expression, I've got 12a cubed minus 18a squared. Now, what is the biggest number that can divide into 12 and 18? Think carefully. If you say 2, 2 can divide into 12 and 18. 
but there's a remainder. If you say 3, 3 can divide into 12 and 18, but there's a remainder. What about 6? Six? 6 can divide into 12 twice, and 6 can divide into 18 three times. That is the highest common factor. So part of our highest common factor is going to be 6. So we can take out a 6 so long. Can I take out a variable? Look at term 1, look at term 2. Do they have variables in common? Yes. A is in both of the terms. I can take out an A. Now, what is our rule? We take out the variable with the lowest exponent. Now, what is lower? A to the power of 3 or A to the power of 2? Surely A to the power of 2. So our highest common factor is 6A to the power of 2. Then we open our leftover bracket. We take our first term and we divide it by our highest common factor to give us this part in our leftover bracket. Then we're going to take our second term, divide it by our highest common factor to give us this part. And we're going to close our bracket. So let's do it. What's 12 divided by 6? 2. What is a cubed divided by a squared? Remember, we're dividing. The bases are the same. We keep the base and we minus the exponents. What's 3 minus 2? Well, it's a to the power of 1. And we know we don't need to write the 1. Why am I minusing? Because that's what we do when we divide variables. Then, our second term. What is negative 18 divided by 6? Negative 3. What is a squared divided by a squared? Well, essentially, they cancel each other out. It's 1, which cancels. So there we go. We fully factorize our expression to check we can multiply our highest common factor into the brackets, and we should get exactly what we started with which we do. There we go, guys. In the next video, I'm going to go over highest common factor when our highest common factor is a common bracket. So subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed this lesson, and stay tuned for the next video.